Can you start? Andre? Yes, I'm running. Okay, we're running. We can start. Okay, we can start. I believe that critical thinking is probably a lost cause, unfortunately, because of its arduous, unnatural methodology, criticalness is in most cases a sporadic implementation in thinking, which is more prone to a kind of raise and fall here and there, holding a type of temporary nature instead than an inclination to a serious perpetuation, passion and progress in our own thinking abilities abilities to think ahead and therefore social betterment. Not out of, of pessimistic viewpoints, but rather as a realistic consideration, it seems that in education, not just the matter schooling system, but also the private, personal, intimate cognitive development, changes do take place. But these changes are merely sort of modifications of the previous psychobehavioral model therefore the sociological one, and aim to adapt to the current times we live. And within this process of adaptation, the element of fear often remains an unquestioned factor, therefore it cannibalizes the serious attention we require to actually grow. These modifications do not really constitute uh, uh, nor provide a tangible implementations of and in education. It appears to be obvious how the whole structure of education must be reformed and how, as a start, such reformations should involve a systematically deep and serious study of all the determinant elements of life we come across with, starting from the element of fear. In a country where the, the, the level of hygiene is very scarce, yeah. We have a proliferation of viruses. Now, I like to use this metaphor, uh, uh, to apply this metaphor to the uh, modern overload of information we have to face every day because of social media, internet, and we, we have plenty of sources of information nowadays, and uh, the overwhelming majority of them are quite biased. There are many memes that are absorbed by people without proper questioning, also because people are not quite trained enough with critical thinking skills. Do you think that if we say that memetics is an essential and so important uh, matter of study at school, do you think that this makes some sense? But in a way, as a metaphor, it works as quite well because uh, we're bombarded with more and more memes and we as human meme machines select some and not others. It's, I suppose, analogous. I don't like these analogies very much, but it, it's sort of analogous to... Um, you can ask about how biological viruses get into the body. They bypass aspects of the immune system. Um, they uh, provide some kind of um, function occasionally, and that's why they're selected. And memes are just the same. Uh, you could think about, rather crudely, think about memes as um, on a continuum. It's actually, I would say, a multidimensional space. But you can think of them as a continuum from the memes that we select to remember and copy because they're good, useful, true, beautiful in some way of benefit to us or to our society or to the planet or something, um, uh, to the ones which are purely viral and are um, just uh, uh, proliferating for their own sake. And our task as humans is to, is, is to select among them. And yes, we can't do that very well. Yes, we need critical thinking skills. But all the time you have to ask, um, who is benefiting from this? Do you think we need uh, the study of memetics at school? Essentially, memetics is the idea of taking evolutionary theory beyond biology, or the idea of universal Darwinism. That if we look at things like um, beliefs, political beliefs, religions, uh, schooling, all the things we learn in maths and geography, and these are all memes that are copied from person to person. And 
Mimetics is only one way of understanding how this works. I mean, there are plenty of other theories out there that would put biology first, others that put psychology first and, and, and have a completely different view. So yes, in a, in a rich school education, mimetics can, can have a place. But, you know, we don't yet really know whether mimetics um, works as a, as a scientific theory. I think it's brilliant. I think it works. Um, but I'm very, very much in a tiny minority. I think I would like to see it as part of uh, lessons in evolutionary theory. I think it's very, very important that in schools all over the world, kids are taught evolutionary theory from early on. And we know the terrible problems we have around the world, where in some states in the United States of America, you're not allowed to teach evolution. Turkey now is, is banning the teaching of evolution. This is horrendous. That is far, far more important uh, to my mind than, than whether we act, actually teach people um, this little offshoot, if you like, of, of the theory of evolution. I mean, I would be all for it, but I'm trying to be rational about this and think what is the most important thing for kids to learn? It's very, very important for kids to learn that that we have in common with all other species, that we are biological organisms like others, that we have a, a history and a prehistory that goes back to the beginning of the planet, so that the kids don't end up thinking that we are spirits or souls, that, you know, with good and evil and all, all, all the stuff that they may be taught um, by repressive religions. A, a fundamental part of, of, of mimetics is the idea that um, skills and behaviours and habits and ways of doing things and technologies, all of these memes are selfish information that is using us to get itself copied. Yes. So, I mean, if we take all these things that around us in this room, this, the, the food and the, the, the pans and the boxes and the cellophane and all the things, these are all memes, they're all things that have been copied from person to person. These are all the winners, and this table and your suit. They're not quite dangerous, these memes. <laughs> but no, but, it, but to, understand, to understand the world in a mimetic way is to say, how did all these things get here? Why these tables? Why this suit? Why that food? And the answer is that these particular memes have had whatever it takes to survive in this particular environment. That's mimetic thinking. That, that's the heart and the basis of mimetic thinking. What about, uh, again, um, about education? Intertwining critical analysis, critical thinking with mimetic thinking, with, with mimetics. Because uh, there is nothing wrong with the table, there are good means, okay, we replicate an order to set up a table if I have to serve some coffee. What about uh, freedom of religion, for example, which is a, a, a moral meme, and many people fail to comprehend that uh, freedom of religion implies uh, freedom of indoctrination, which is a dangerous meme. So if we have an education, uh, uh, um, which I believe is incredibly necessary, especially nowadays, uh, uh, that intertwines memetics and critical thinking skills, and not only the me methodological aspect of critical thinking skills, but the possibility to actually apply the psychological and daily life. I think that is incredibly necessary nowadays, and it's not only for the rich schools, so that, that should be, I mean, everywhere, not only, I mean, a school so should be a part of media and, and social media, every form of the modern communication. This is what I'm trying to help. Well, we already know from a lot of research how incredibly hard it is to teach critical thinking. We also know that teaching critical thinking uh, has rather limited effects upon uh, people's religious beliefs. Um, at those religious beliefs that appear to stand in the way of critical thinking. It's really, really hard. So I would interpret your question as, might it help if we were able to teach memetics as well? That's a very interesting question. Um, in principle, I think the answer would be yes, but how incredibly hard it is. I often ask myself the question, and I give lectures on this question, why has memetics failed to flourish as a scientific theory? In my view, it is clearly a scientific theory. It's testable, only it's very difficult to test it. Uh, few people have come up with any really good ways of testing it. Um, and that's the answers that I come up with to my own question, why has memetics floundered, are at least partly because it is so counterintuitive. People have find it hard enough to understand basic evolutionary principle. I mean, what Darwin saw, the basic evolutionary algorithm, if you have uh, things that vary 
and then you have selection amongst the things and only a few survive. And if the survivors pass on uh, whatever it was that helped them survive to the next generation, then design appears out of nowhere, must appear. It's just an algorithm that runs all the time. People hate this idea. This is at least partly why we have anti-evolutionary theories all over the place. Now, that's hard enough to teach people that biologically. I mean, a lot of people just hate the idea that their bodies are evolved and let alone their brains evolved. Now add to that the mimetic idea that all this stuff, everything around us, all of culture, our language, our religions, our, and so on, it's all selfish information using us. We're just copying machines and selecting machines. That idea, people hate it. Uh, Mostly they can't grasp it because it's too, it goes too much against the very natural view, which we know starts early in childhood, that I am an agent, I'm in here, I have free will, I have consciousness, I act in the world. You know, that's how we start. You have to overthrow all of that. So, you know, you're asking a, a very tall question. I mean, it, 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 it's a tall order here that, that you would be able to get people to understand this. Now, I might be wrong. It may be that memetics actually really doesn't work as a scientific theory. It's not a good way of describing the world. I think it is, and I think that the difficulty people have understanding it is part of the problem we face. That's not going to change anytime soon, that stuff. Meanwhile, the world is changing incredibly fast. And I mean, I agree with your implication that it would help us if we could understand the world from this evolutionary perspective. It would help us to face the challenges we have ahead of information overload, artificial intelligence and so on. But I'm not underestimating the difficulty of, of doing that. Is it possible to switch memetic thinking into something that is no longer only based about, or mainly based about adapting? but uh, in terms of uh, betterment, uh, which I'm talking about better thinking skills, better uh, critical thinking skills, better capability to uh, comprehend the sound accuracy of arguments uh, uh, and, and all the rest of that. My concerns are that if we take uh, memetic seriously, what we have is in the modern world is exactly what you would expect. We have a, an evolutionary process that is going faster and faster. Evolutionary processes do this. They depend upon selecting from the amount of available variation. And the more variation you have and the, and the more selection pressure you have, the faster things change and, and design appears out of nowhere. We're at this accelerating phase. I have argued, as I, I'm sure you know, that there's not just memes, that there's a third replicator, that now the information that's being copied in these phones you've mentioned, it deserves the name of being a third replicator. I've called this Treams because of third memes, if you like, a third replicator in the process. And that this is a new process that's taking off. So the memes began very slowly when human beings or our ancestors began to imitate some couple of million years ago, possibly, we don't know when, and it was very slow. Stone tools didn't change for a million years, but they took off and it's going faster and faster. Now we've created these phones and computers and servers and the whole of the internet and the cloud and everything, um, and a new process is taking off and that's speeding up. Now, to my mind, critical thinking is not, and we always need critical thinking, that's not going to help us here. What will help us here is to, is to ask big questions. What is our role in a world in which AI very quickly is capable of doing things that we're not capable of, where you can ask a question of Google or Alexa or any of these, these things, and there'll be more of them, and the answers will come. We have out there distributed intelligence possibly distributed consciousness. We have intelligence that already, I would say, is beyond anything that any single human can do. What is the role of humans in that? I would say, if we don't uh, understand what's going on, we will not in any way have any wriggle room for our role. We will become just the energy providers, the machine providers, the slaves of technological information, the dreams that are taking off. Now, this isn't a great view for the future. Critical thinking is not going to help us there. What's going to help us there is thinking in evolutionary terms, trying to understand the proliferation of information and ask which dreams, which machines will thrive, which will be unselected, selected out, and try to understand what the implications of that process are. Probably they are going to be too fast. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. If, if it's, it's too, too fast, fast it's right. dangerous, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. 
if a person protects freedom of religion, if a person is trained in, 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 a, in, in, uh, in terms of metamimetic thinking, the person will automatically comprehend the dangerousness in it, because that means freedom of indoctrinating our children with uh, a certain ideologies. Can mimetic thinking be educated? I know it's a strange question. Now, let's create an analogy. Uh, considering how uh, bio a biological antivirus works against the viruses, and also considering how a technological antivirus works against but, uh, in, uh, informatic uh, viruses. Can we also develop, in terms of edu educational programs, what we call metamimetic thinking skills against what, again, Richard Dawkins called the viruses of the mind? Is this possible, or is this only maybe a philosophical conversation? I was thinking about um, a meta-psychologist uh, um, who is a quite important psychologist in Italy uh, a few years ago. Um, the conversation we had was quite rational up to the point when, uh, when this person said that she believed in angels and she was actually applying that in her uh, psychotherapy. Uh, so I'm quite concerned about the infiltration of like this magical thinking and, and I'll call it New Age movement uh, and uh, um, these spiritual ideas in the field of uh, modern psychology. I also consider that psychology is not really something we can test in a lab. And uh, uh, coming out with uh, new theories mixed together with uh, uh, New Age uh, ideologies, I believe is something quite dangerous. Uh, what would you say about this? Uh... Yeah, your example is a rather example of um, in, uh, uh, influencing psychology by religion, uh, which is uh, quite common uh, also, but uh, as you noticed, uh, uh, psychology is uh, full of pseudoscience. It's full of pseudoscience and it's full of uh, bad practices uh, and uh, there are several reasons why uh, this is so. Uh, I think uh, it starts uh, at the university. It starts uh, from bad science. Psychology is kind of a new religion, I could say. Because, uh, you know, uh, uh, the role of religion in uh, uh, modern society uh, is uh, lower and lower. Uh, but we need something instead. Uh, so uh, uh, we are thinking about other individuality, uh, we are thinking about self-fulfillment, about self-esteem, uh, uh, we believe in positive thinking and in many such uh, things uh, which are popularized by uh, color magazines, by uh, TV, by media, by social media. Uh, and people quite often use uh, psychology as a substitute of religion. I was thinking about it. I don't quite, uh, I'm not quite comfortable with this uh, promotion of self-esteem in psychology uh, because uh, what often happens is about saying you should go out and you should meet someone, you should be social so to gain some self-esteem. But uh, I think that if this is, a, uh, is approached in a superficial way, that idea of self-esteem can actually become a form of dependence. So a person feels like uh, in this compulsive need to, to socialize at every cost or, or something like this. So, so I think that self-esteem should be approached more qualitatively uh, with more quality and critical thinking more than uh, as an action. Uh, we hope that the person will feel better, but. Uh, and the person has to engage that constantly over and over and over, otherwise uh, the drug is not there, so it can, can become quite a drug. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, this is an ideology. Uh, we are forced uh, to um, positive thinking, let's say. It's ideology, it's, uh, it's kind of religion, because uh, 
there is an assumption, assumption uh, behind this uh, that uh, a positive thinking is good one and negative thinking is bad one. It's not true because uh, people who think uh, uh, in a negative way, uh, they protect better themselves. Uh, people who are pessimists, uh, they live longer lives and uh, they are usually healthier than optimists. Uh, when you are forced to uh, believe in yourself and to be confident that your self-esteem is high and you are okay, you don't develop yourself because uh, the base for developing is uh, to understand that I'm not uh, ideal, that I should change something uh, with me. And there's also a hidden assumption that negative emotions are bad, which is absolutely not true. We uh, evolved it as a human beings uh, and we used negative emotions and positive emotions uh, in the same way. So negative emotions are very informative. Uh, they are absolutely necessary in our everyday uh, life. So when you read in uh, colorful magazines, just start to, with positive thinking, uh, be optimistic, uh, like everybody around you. Uh, it's rubbish. It's uh, uh, another ideology. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, critical thinking is a necessary tool? Uh, also combined uh, uh, with uh, memetics and uh, with metacognition in psychology? It's, uh, this is absolutely basic in uh, science. I, I think, I'm sure, critical thinking is the uh, a basic uh, skill, basic tool for all scientists. Without critical thinking, uh, we wouldn't develop science completely at all. But what must be said, uh, critical thinking is not a natural way of uh, thinking. Uh, we uh, evolved uh, to confirm uh, our hypotheses, not to verify them, not to falsify them, what is the sense of science. Uh, so even we as, as a scientist, uh, we are very, very often wrong. Stay with a real world, a real world that is here and here. And here. We will face probably throughout our lifetime the coming into being of artificial intelligence and we don't know uh, what the impact will be with it. And if we don't raise uh, what I call uh, metamemetic thinking skills, I think that probably we will have uh, serious problems. Be critical.